What is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com. It's time to ruffle some feathers. Another blade steel video, CPMD2. Let's light it up. So, CPMD2, what is it? What makes it different? Now, I'm going to be honest. So, we've had a lot of detractors from CPMD2 since, you know, knives like the Benchmade Redoubt. Uh, Claymore, the Mini Claymore have come out. All of those using CPMD2. Um, and even some outliers. Uh, and, and we'll actually show these up close as well. Really cool knives. Uh, really sturdy, sturdy blades. Now, there's been a lot of detractors saying, oh, that much money for D2? <sighs> yes and no. So CPMD2 is a little bit different. Now, to understand CPMD2, we've got to go all the way back to D2 blade steel. D2 was originally created uh, around 1919, 1920, with the original patent coming in somewhere around 1929. A uh, little bit different version, a little bit different as far as the composition goes. But overall, um, the composition for D2 is going to be about 1.55% carbon. So it's a high carbon blade steel, um, somewhere around 12% chromium. So just under that 13% threshold to be considered uh, stainless. Now, a lot of people don't realize that. They think D2 tool steel, it's not stainless. It's not, and in really harsh conditions, and if it's not taken care of, it's, it, it will corrode over time. However, you're talking about 1% chromium difference between that and being actually considered stainless. Um, also, we're talking 0.25% vanadium. And then later on, after the original patent, um, there was a subsequent patent uh, released with 0.8% molybdenum. Um, and what that did was it made it so that it could be air hardened. Um, and actually helped tighten up the composition a little bit. Now, what, what ended up happening was Crucible ended up in 2007 releasing their CPM version of D2. So basically what they did, and this is what I want people to understand, is they took the same composition, essentially. Now, there are some variances like uh, Crucible's CPM version is going to have 11.5% chromium, so just a little bit less chromium. But in their metallurgical research, they found that this actually helped the carbide structure along with the entire CPM process. So it's not just D2. You're not just adding all the same elements and just making D2 uh, in a forge as you would have uh, original D2. What they're doing is they're doing their crucible particle metallurgy process, which, I mean, if you guys have seen our crucible video, definitely I suggest you check that out. And we're not here to talk about D2 either because we've already done a video on D2. We didn't really get into CPM D2 in that video, but that's kind of what we want to talk about here. So in 2007, they released their CPM version of D2. And what this did was with the powdered metallurgy version, coming out, it really tightened up that carbide structure and made the carbides, uh, I guess, made them smaller, um, also makes a much more dense product. So what this ends up doing is you still keep all of the great positives of D2, but you don't get the negatives. Negatives being that it can be a little brittle, uh, it can chip. Um, so this tighter carbide structure, more dense structure overall, is going to make it a lot more durable material. Also, you have to take into account that you're still going through the whole powdered metallurgy process. So, you know, you've got to add in all the elements, you've got to melt it down, then you've got to put it through the powdered steel process, which means you've got to put it through the nozzle, it's got to be blasted, then you get the powder, all right? Then you get the, the tiny, tiny beads. Then it has to go into the hipping process, uh, at which point it's hot isostatic pressing. So it's heated up, it's pressed all, this, uh, all at the same time, and that's what creates that more dense product. Now, all of that costs money. 
So the entire powdered steel process is what makes this a more expensive material because you can't just say, oh, it's D2. Um, there's no way they can charge that much for it. it it's still got to go through the same exact process and it takes the same amount of time and the same amount of effort as S35VN or CPM3V or CPM10V or 15V. It goes through the same CPM process as all of those steels. So you're still talking about the same effort that goes into making it. So that's what I that's what I really wanted to convey getting this video. Now, what makes this different? Well, like I said before, um, it's going to be a lot finer carbide structure. And like I said, you're going to get all the positives of D2, which I'm going to be honest with you, D2 has always been one of my favorite blade steels. Um, I've got more D2 knives than I've got anything else because I love D2 for what it is and what it does. It works really well. I think it's a great combination of toughness, edge retention, corrosion resistance because it does have some. It's not, you know, it's not like 1095. But at the same time, it's also not insanely hard to sharpen. Now, if you don't have any experience sharpening, if, if you're only used to sharpening like 440 or 1095, it's going to be a little more difficult to sharpen. But you're still talking about a blade steel that is a great combination of all the things and does a little bit of everything really well. And CPM D2 just builds off of that because you've still got a very tough knife with good edge retention, decent corrosion resistance, even though it's not stainless. Um, but at the same time, you're not getting quite the brittleness that you might find in some D2, not all, but some D2 um, based on that carbide structure. So I hope this has been somewhat informative. Uh, like I said, we've got several different really interesting knives, not just from Benchmade, but also I implore you to check out some really cool stuff that Kershaw has done with knives like the Dividend and the Composite Leaks, um, because those are coming in with CPM D2 in conjunction with other blade steels, uh, namely N690 for the cutting edge and then CPM D2 on the spine edge so that you're adding the corrosion resistance on the cutting edge, especially right there on that secondary bevel, um, making it really nice as far as if you're you know in a little more harsh environment, but you're also getting the stability of D2 on the back side of that blade. Really cool concept, and I think they're knocking it out of the park. Folks, let us know in the comments down below what you think of CPM D2. Do you have any experience with it? A lot of people don't. A lot of people haven't really used it, um, but it does get a lot of hate online. Um, and there's a lot of argument back and forth. I hope this has cleared things up just a little bit. As always, folks, it's been me, TC, here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com. And remember, if it cuts like that CPMD2, we carry it, don't you know?